Hello everyone, thank you for stopping by. I'm excited to share a card that features one of the new 3D embossing folders by Spellbinders. These folders are really amazing. They have so much depth and dimension. And today's card features a beauty called Tile Mosaic. I'm going to prepare my cardstock for embossing by spraying it very well with water. This will do a couple of things. It helps to loosen up those fibers and the embossed design will have a crisp look. It will also prevent the cardstock from cracking. I've already cut the panel to the size that I wanted, four inches by five and a quarter inches. So I'm making sure that I center it over top of the design so it's the same top to bottom and left to right. Spellbinders has recently released the universal plate system that can accommodate anything from wafer thin dies up to these thick 3D embossing folders. Unfortunately, I don't have it yet, but I figured out a sandwich that would work on my Gemini electric die cutter. I started with the bottom cutting plate, then the folder topped up with the plastic shim. And as you can see, I got a nice result. It's quite wet, so it's set aside to dry completely. And I start preparing my elements that are going to go on the panel. I'm going to be working with another gorgeous die set called Gift Borders and Sentiments. The first thing that I do is I cut some black cardstock with the outline die to create a foundation for the inlaid paper piecing. I'm going to cover this die cut with some Su Quang double-sided tape. There's lots of presents with lots of die cuts and this will make it fast and easy to put together. I'm not going to spend my time fussy cutting around this tape. I remove the backing, make some cuts from the outer edge into the die cut and then fold it up on top of itself. The outline die was also cut from black sheet foam and so I mount my foundation piece on top of it. The outline die and the detail piece are held together with a little bit of tape and I die cut some matte gold cardstock. Zhu Quang tape is a very strong adhesive and not very forgiving, so I use the backing paper from the tape to place down on the background while I get one side lined up and then I can remove it and lay down the rest. The panel of presents are going to be in soft rainbow colors. If you save your scrap pieces of cardstock, this is a good way to start using them up. Each color of cardstock is trimmed down to be just slightly bigger than the present that I'm going to be using it on. There's a lot of die cutting, so it's easiest for me to use my little mini sidekick by Sizzix right at my workstation, die cut each present one at a time and paper piece it. As usual, if there's anything in this video that grabs your attention and you would like more information, you can find links in the description of this YouTube video or on my blog at bonniecarolee.com. Even though there are many die cuts, this goes very quickly. Firstly, I'm not having to worry about adhesive because my background has been covered with the Su Quang. Using a jewel picker for the tiny die cuts works very well. For some of the presents, the die cuts stay intact on the cardstock or on the die. In that case, I just line it up over top of the image and pop them in place. I love it when that happens. That's probably the quickest way of dealing with these die cuts. This die set also comes with different styles of bows, which I have die cut from matte gold cardstock to match the outline of the presents. And I just mix it up as I top each present off with these pretty finishing touches. The embossed panel measures four by five and a quarter inches card front size and it's going to be adhered to matte gold cardstock that is slightly larger for a thin reveal. I make sure that when I apply the adhesive, I get good coverage across the panel, hitting all of those high points 
for the back of the panel before it goes on to the cardstock. There is so much dimension on the panel that it actually can pop up, so I set it aside with my Misty on top until the glue is completely set. And while that is drying, I'm going to apply Tombow glue to my die cut sentiment. It will be set aside to dry completely. When Tombow glue is dry, it is tacky and repositionable. And now I can do a little exchange, setting my sentiments aside to dry, and my panel can be adhered to a top folding A2 size card base. The foam-backed grouping of presents is then adhered to the lower half of the panel. And again, it's only going to be sitting on those high points of the embossing, so I'm going to set my Misty on top until the glue sets. And now it's time to work on that fine die-cut sentiment. The height of this sentiment is perfect for catching the two horizontal lines of high points on the embossing. The first thing that I'm doing, which is the bonus of using Tombow glue in its dry state, is laying out my sentiment so that I can get it centered side to side. While I did that, I placed the sentiment lower than I wanted to have it. And when I was happy with the position, then I just took each of the words and sometimes separate letters and moved it up a space and working with fine die-cut sentiments or sentiment phrases where the words are separate, in this case both, using Tombow glue makes it a lot easier to manage. Once I have everything in place, then I can go back and make some adjustments because the Tombow glue in its dry state is repositionable for a while. The card is going to be finished up with some gold confetti just here and there placed on a few of the presents. And to really make that confetti pop, I top it up with Nouveau Crystal Drops Morning Dew. And that completes this card featuring Spellbinder's new 3D embossing folder, Tile Mosaic. The dimension is incredible and I love that this is a quick and easy background for any card. Thank you so much for stopping by and as always, I appreciate your visit.